Family Theater presents Irene Dunn and Gene Evans. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents The Coat, starring Gene Evans. And now, here is your hostess, Irene Dunn. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. A family theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice. A practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, The Coat, starring Jean Evans as Stan and featuring Jeanette Nolan as Miss Fuller. You hear it now, don't you, Miss Fuller? Sure, she hears it. She's pushing 60, but her ears are still okay. Oh, no, Miss Fuller, don't try to get away. I'm going right with you. Got a good hold on your arm, see? A good grip on all that mink. Yeah. Yeah, she thinks she's gonna get rescued and leave me behind. But it ain't gonna be like that. No, sir, I'm all through getting pushed around. I've been pushed around plenty by her and all her rich friends, and some of them weren't even rich. They were just poets or painters or something riding around on her yacht because they spoke fancy English. And there I was running back and forth in a monkey suit, serving them food and soup and tall drinks. Every time any of them snapped their fingers, I was supposed to hop. The first time I got a breather was the night of the storm. They were too sick to want any service. All but her. She felt great. I was heading down to the galley for something to eat when I spotted her leaning against the rail, watching the waves like it was some big show the Pacific Ocean was putting on just for her. I don't know how she ever heard my footsteps over that storm. Oh, Stanley? Stanley? Yes, am Would you do something for me? Yes, sir. Here are the keys to my cabin. There's a fur coat thrown across the foot of my bed. Bring it up, will you? It ain't my business, Miss Fuller. But do you think it's smart to be up here with a storm like this going on? Oh, I'll be all right. I'm more afraid of catching a cold than anything else. Here. Here's something for you, for your trouble. Just as you say, Miss Fuller. Her cabin was way the other end of the yacht, and below at that. I finally found it, though, grabbed her mink coat and started back. I must have got balled up somewhere, because when I come out on deck from the companionway, I was on the wrong side of the boat. I hadn't any more than turned around to start back when we piled up on that reef. I didn't know what had happened. My head took an awful wallop against something. Put me out for a minute. I still had a mink coat with me. There was a lot of yelling. But I couldn't see anybody. I couldn't see anybody or anything. My head was ringing and ringing. And I felt the yacht breaking up on that reef. So I started for the lifeboats, feeling my way along the deck. But I never made it. A, bur- a big wave. A wave picked me up, lifted me right off my feet. I tried to grab the rail, but it was oily. My fingers wouldn't hold it. Then the boat shivered again, and I was in the water. I stayed afloat the best I could. For hours, black and wet all around. My head ringing worse and worse. It like to blinded me for good. A couple of times, I guess I went under. Why fight it, I thought. Anything that had stopped that banging inside of me is good. Good! And then I remembered that when you drown, you die. I didn't want that. Maybe they were coming to rescue me. I'd hang on, because I didn't want to go out yet. I'm a young guy. A young guy. And just that fast, my head didn't hurt anymore. I was still in the water, but it was okay. It wasn't black, and I didn't mind it. And then, like from way off, I heard someone calling. Me. Help! I'm, I'm 
over here! Me up, Miss Fuller. Take my right hand now. Grab my other arm. Steady. Don't swap her. Grab me. I can't. We're tips. You're making it. You're making it. A little more. There. Oh, you. You're all right now. Get your breath. Did you see anyone else? Nah. No one. Was washed over the side, hit the rocks. Didn't see anyone. Say, you're wearing the coat. Look out! Grab that tiller, you want to sink us? What are you doing now? Heading back into the wind. You better start bailing that last one till their tender's over. What? Start bailing! I'll keep her into the wind. There's no bucket. You'll have to use your hands. My hands? For heaven's sake, get to work! We'll never ride this storm out with a boat full of water. All right, all right. I'd just like to know who put you in command. What did you say? Not that. Forget it. I'm bailing it right. I quit. All we've done for two days is row. Look at that sail. Don't the wind ever blow around here? We're lost and you won't say so. My hands are raw and my back's on fire. I told you to leave your shirt on. Where are we? Stop looking at that map and tell me where we are. Miss Fuller. Well, as I see it, the yacht went down about here. Where do you get that? A few hours before we struck the reef, Captain Winkler announced that we were just a thousand miles from our next port of call, Tahiti. A thousand miles? The night before last, I finally located the Southern Cross. The only direction in which there's any land close enough to make for is north. A small concentration of islands. If my estimates are at all accurate, we should sight those islands within 48 hours. You trying to hit those little specks? Well, according to the map scale, some of them are 20 to 40 miles long. You're crazy. Turn the boat around. We're heading for Tahiti. Stanley, even if we drifted that way for the first two days, we'd still be 900 miles from it. Listen. Our food and water can't last over 72 hours. You got a compass? Unfortunately, no. Then how do you know which direction we're going in? Guesswork, mainly. It's around... 4 p.m., I imagine. That would put north, according to the position of the sun, about there. It looks as wet as the rest of the ocean. I can believe you're guessing all right. Well, Miss Fuller, if I'm going to work these oars anymore, it ain't going to be on an empty stomach. I'm hungry. Open up another one of them cans. Stanley, you ate less than four hours ago. Our supply of food... I ain't on your payroll anymore, and I'm doing all the work. Come on and open it up. I take my turn at the oars. Yeah, well, I'm asleep. For all I know, you're sleeping too. You ain't been breaking your back. That's untrue. You know it. Look at these blisters. All I know is I'm hungry and thirsty. Do I get the food? Listen to me, Stanley. Okay, then split it up. Down the middle. We'll see who lasts the longest. Yeah, this is more like it. The wind does all the work. We've covered a lot of distance in the last few days. I hope it's been in the right direction. You hope it is. It better be. My food's getting low. What time do you think it is? Oh, early evening. About six o'clock, I guess. When are you going to eat? Later. I'm not hungry now. You're never hungry. What you saving all that food for? Think you missed your islands? No. They should still be north of us. You said we'd spot them in two days. That was an opinion. 
It was your idea to divide the food. I didn't get pulled out of the ocean to starve to death. Stanley, for heaven's sake. You let me eat my food, but you hung on to your own pretty tight. I'm just as hungry as you are. And why don't you eat some? The longer our food holds out, the longer we'll stay alive. The longer you'll stay alive. If you didn't gorge yourself... Gorge myself? You're crazy. How could I gorge myself on that little bit? I could have eaten twice as much. When we divvied it up, I thought I had twice as much. What do you mean? How do I know what you're doing when I'm asleep? You could be dipping into my stuff. I have my own. I'm no thief. Anybody's a thief when he's hungry enough. What are you doing? Stanley, sit down. I'm going to take back that food you stole from me. Stanley, you're wrong. I didn't steal it. If you don't want to go over the side, hang on to that tiller and shut up. Don't be a fool. You're... Stanley? Stanley? Look. What? Over there. To your left on the horizon. I can't see anything. Breakers! Over there, look! Yeah. Yeah. Now I see them. It's land. It's an island. An island. We were another two hours getting there. After eight stinking days in that boat, solid ground, a hundred yards away, and the old lady wanted to sit outside the breakers all night, waiting for the sun to come up so we could find an opening. She said going over those rocks might tear the bottom out of the boat. If waves 20 feet high won't ride us across, I don't know what you think will. Give me that teller. We'll never make it. Get up in the prow and keep your eyes open for them rocks. It's too dark. I won't be able to see a thing. Hang on. We're going over. Stop it. Look out. Damn. Jump. Jump. You'll be crushed. I'd have done better by 100% to stay in that boat. The rocks we got hung up on were the last few in the reef. Right the other side of them was the lagoon. But I didn't know that until it was too late. Jump, the old biddy tells me. And even before I landed, I could guess what had happened. I was half into the water when my knee cracked down on that rock. And for a moment, I thought my leg had been snapped off. Yeah, she finally pulled me out. But she took her sweet time about it. We were a half hour making the beach, and it took her another 40 minutes to drag me up to one of the sand caves. I'll bet I told her a dozen times my leg was broken before she made a splint for it. She spent the next morning looking over the island. Some island. Not a soul on it. Half a dozen birds and a couple of dead fish. She picked a nice place to land, all right. There was nothing she couldn't ball up. Like the first time the plane came over. For three weeks, she'd been saving wood, piling it up on the beach. Said we'd need it to signal with. I heard the plane first that night, and I called to her. Miss Fuller? Miss Fuller? Yes, Stanley. What's the matter now? Listen. Do you hear it? What? Motors, listen. It's... Yes, it's... A plane. A plane. Well, don't stand there, Gape, and get your signal fire started. Oh, yes, I... Oh, Stanley! Hurry! They'll pass right over in this dark. I don't know if it'll start. The wood is still wet from the rain last night. Well, try it, try it, it'll burn. They'll never see this little fire in a cave. Oh, it... it isn't catching. The wood is soaked right through. Try one of them other piles. It's passing over, hurry! Light it! Light it! I... can't... The rain soaked it. We'll yell. Maybe they'll hear us. Here! Here! And we're down here! Don't leave us! We're down here! They're going away. They're going. They're leaving me here. They didn't see it. Stanley. Stanley, I know. It's terrible. But, Stanley, look, there'll be another one. And when it comes the next time, we'll be ready for it. First of all, we'll keep the wood in the cave. You let that wood get wet. I should have started the fire myself. But your leg... It'll be blazing now. They would have seen it and come down. 
I'd be on the plane right now. Stanley, it wasn't anybody's fault. You never listen to anybody. A couple of nights ago, I had a thing all worked out to signal them with. Using palm leaves. Spread them out on the beach to spell help. But you wouldn't listen. When was this? Two nights ago. You were changing my splint. I said to lay out palm leaves, and when a plane came over, I'd see them. Why, well, Stanley, that's a good idea. Especially if a plane goes over during the day. But this is the first mention you've made of it. Two nights ago, when you were changing my splint... I haven't reset your splint for a week. A week? Don't tell that's me! That's right. Every Sunday. Now, I know you're crazy. What day you think it is? Saturday. By now, Sunday morning. It's Wednesday. I got it marked right here on the wall. Wednesday night. I'm afraid you lost count, Stanley. That's understandable enough. I've you... lost count. What kind of talk is that? You're the one who's lost... I didn't want to tell you this because it seemed unnecessary. You recovered with no ill effects. What are you talking about? Recovered from what? Don't excite yourself. It was really nothing. What did I recover from? A very common thing. The night after your leg was broken, you began to run a fever. Occasionally, you were delirious. Just occasionally. Being in a state of semi-consciousness as a result of shock is no reflection on your mind. I had a fever, though. Fever can sneak up on you. Killed my old man. The stuff you catch from rabbits. What? One afternoon, he got feeling tired, so he closed up his butcher shop and come home. In three days, he was dead from fever. Stanley, rabbit fever is a specific disease. When I said that you had a fever, I simply meant that your temperature rose. That's fever, ain't it? I was out for four days. It's not the same thing. You're no doctor. How do you know what I had? You should have told me. Well, anyway, now that I have, perhaps you'll take better care of yourself. Don't twist and turn so. Every time you shift your weight, it jars the splint. You try lying on your back all day without moving. I know it's uncomfortable, but your leg won't heal any other way. What's all this new worry about my leg healing? You getting tired of playing nursemaid to one of the help? Not nearly so tired as I am of your childish temper. Now it's my temper, huh? You ain't very hard to work out. I'll bet you spent every minute of those four days I was under hoping I'd never wake up. Of all the ridiculous... And then when I did... You decided not to tell me what had happened. You figured if the fever got me once, it'd do it again. And the next time, I'd stay under. I've heard some vicious nonsense in my time, but never... Well, let me tell you something, lady. It's going to take a lot more than a broken leg to put me out of the way. And here's something else. If anything happens to me, you're all alone. All alone, see? On an empty island. You wouldn't like that. In a week, you'd go crazy. Crazy as they come. That straightened the old dame out. She wised up I was going to be around for a while. Even started working on a cane for me. In a week, I was ready to use it. Getting out of that stinking cave for the first time in almost two months was pretty good. Use the cane, Stanley. That's it. Just as a guide, don't put your weight on it. Lean on me. Stop crowding me. I'm okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, this is far enough. I, I got to sit down. Here. On this rock. That's better. Your island ain't so big, is it? <laughs> that where you spend all your time? Up there on that cliff? Yes. It's the highest point. That's where I sit and watch for the ships. You ain't looking for ships all day. What else you do up there? Feel sorry for yourself? <laughs> A little. Moping about all that jack you could be spending? Perhaps. You ever stop to wonder how many of those fancy artists and writers would hang around you if you were broke? You ungrateful. What am I supposed to do, fall down dead because you gave me a job running errands for oh, you? Oh, Stanley, let's don't argue. Maybe you should have let me stay in jail. I was just trying to help you. I didn't want your help. I wish you'd done your social work somewhere else. Oh, why do you resent me so? Because I don't want anybody turning me into a waiter. Well, you... You remind me of a nephew of mine who was killed in the war. I thought by... You thought. I deserve something better than what you thought. I'm no flunky. All right, Stanley. 
I made a mistake. You bet you did. That's your long suit. Mistakes. We'd be out of here if you hadn't let that firewood get wet. The rain got it wet. I couldn't help that. Now you wait. When my leg's better, I'll have that signal fire going night and day. We ain't too far off the ship lanes. They'll see it. I hope you're right. I hope to heaven you're right. I am right. I won't be sitting around dreaming of boats. I'll see them. They'll be there. And I'll see them. And I'll signal them with my fire. She wasn't watching the ocean, but I'll watch. All the time, every minute. Out here, I can see from one end of the sky to the other. Help me up. What? Help me up. Is it too hot for you here in the sun? No. I want to show you something. Take my arm. I've got it. Now look. Out there, over the ocean, follow my fingertip. Do... Do you see something? Right under the edge of the clouds. What do you see? It's a plane. I can see it, but I can't hear it yet. Stanley, there's nothing out there. It's a plane, and it's coming this way. I gotta light the fire. I got a torch from the cave. Stanley, your leg. There's no plane. Stanley, you'll hurt yourself. This'll light it up. They'll see us this time. Stanley, please. Look, Stanley. There's nothing. There's nothing in the sky. There is. I can even hear it now. You hear it now, too, don't you, Miss Fuller? Sure. You're an old chicken, but your ears are still okay. Oh, no, Miss Fuller. Don't try to get away. I'm going right with you. Got a good hold on your arm, see? A good grip on all that mink. You think you're going to be rescued by that plane and leave me behind. But it ain't going to be like that. Miss Fuller? Miss Fuller? Where are you? Miss Fuller? The airplane. I can't hear the airplane anymore. Miss Fuller? Miss Fuller! She must have found it. She must have found the airplane and gone off without me. Miss Fuller! You said you wanted to help me! If you want to help, don't leave me here! Don't leave me here all alone! Miss Fuller! Hey, Jim. Huh? I didn't know you had anybody working this end of the island. I don't. This oil's no good. Somebody's down here. Huh? Well, you see that smoke over there through the trees? Well, what do you know? Looks like it's a fire on the beach there. You got any idea who it might be? <laughs> it beats me. Let's take a look. It's just over this knoll here. Yeah, well, there's your fire. Hey, look. Some guy sleeping on the beach. Yeah. Boy, you pick up all kinds on these islands. Hey, Jim. Huh? That guy's not sleeping. Yeah. He must have been washed up here. You ever see him before? No. Hey, hey, what's that thing on the ground near him? What? Well, looks something like a piece of fur. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, it's a coat. Some kind of a fur coat, so waterlogged, you'd never know it. Well, any kind of a label in it? Well, let's see. Yeah, yeah. Right here in the inside pocket. Typed. Can hardly read it, though. Miss, Miss Marjorie Fuller. Philadelphia. Hey, Fuller. Yeah? Fuller. Say, isn't that the name of the old lady who, whose yacht piled up on the reef out there near Devil's Head a couple days ago? Fuller? Yeah, yeah, I think it was. I'll bet it's the same one. But, uh, what's her coat doing here, though, with this poor devil? It beats me. You know, I was talking to Joe Fisk. He was the one she hired to pull her yacht off the reef. The old lady? Yeah, yeah. You know, he told me she was all broken up because one of her stewards got washed overboard right the night of the storm. 
Anyone else lost that night? No, no. He was the only one. You know, the old lady didn't even miss him until the next morning. I'll bet this is the guy. I wonder how he got the coat. <laughs> Maybe he stole it. You know, Joe says, from what he learned talking to the crew, that steward was a real no good. Yeah? Yeah, you know, always shooting off his mouth about how he had as much right to the best as anybody else. He had a record, too. A real no good. I'll bet this is the guy. Hmm? Look how his arm stretched out there. Yeah? Toward the place where I picked up the coat. Like he was reaching out to grab it. This is Irene Dunn again. We've been assured that this 20th century of ours is not a particularly family-minded century. And who knows how much of our trouble and of the world's evils stems from that. For many decades now, powerful forces of disintegration have been leveling their guns at family cooperation, at family unity, and family life itself. To restore the balance, of course, we can think in terms of legislation and of various social techniques, and, and we can and should study the problems indicated by juvenile delinquency and, and the results of totally materialistic education. But to begin at the very root of the matter, family theater urges us to begin with ourselves in our own individual families and to do something that we can all begin to do at once. And that is pray. To pray together as families. Now that alone may not change everything, but without that, nothing mere man can do will change anything. It's been true all through history, and it's just as true today. As Family Theater reminds us each week, the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you transcribed The Coat, starring Gene Evans. Irene Dunn was your hostess. Others in our cast were Jeanette Nolan, Leo Curley, and Paul Savage. The script was written and directed for Family Theater by John T. Kelly, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our Family Theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week when Family Theater will present The Cobbler's Window, starring Otto Kruger. Ralph Edwards will be your host. Join us, won't you? <laughs> Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America.